you see Jesus here. Yes. And so it's important that all of us see Jesus a little bit clearer and get a clearer view of him. None of us see him perfectly. None of us see perfectly. We all have shadows. We all have areas that we do not see clearly and things that we don't understand. And so it's in the gathering together in the body of believers that our perception gets cleansed and we get a greater view of who he is. Yeah. Is by connecting together with other believers and seeing them from his perspective, hearing the testimonies, even that was shared just a little while ago, hearing those testimonies gives us just a greater glimpse of him. It yeah. gives us a greater perception of who he is and, and, and his abilities and what he can do in each of our lives. And so it's so important to gather together. It's so important to connect with other believers in this season so that we can enter into what God has for us by seeing him clear in a fresh way. And so <clears throat> let me, uh, some of y'all might love me. Some of y'all might hate me after this message, but, <laughs> but we're going we're gonna to go for it. Um, mo I realize most of us spend most of our lives trying to escape the difficulties of our lives. Mm -hmm. Most of us spend our energies and our resources trying to escape the difficulties of our lives. And the truth is, we're actually called into the opposite. We're called to enter into the difficulties of our lives. We're called to face the difficulties of our lives. And we're called to embrace the difficulties of our lives. I know that doesn't sound good. That doesn't preach well. That, that's not exciting, but it's the truth. <laughs> Yes. And so, and also I'm going to take away another sacred cow from us right now. Jesus is not our hero. Ooh. See, the, see, the concept of a hero is what we think of superheroes, and we love superheroes. Superheroes are great. We love, I love the Marvel movies. I'm a huge fan. But the concept of a hero is you, you picture Superman. Someone is hanging from a building. Hey, help, 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 help. And Superman flies in and grabs that person and rescues them, right? And so unfortunately, because of we've been exposed to that kind of thinking, we've attached that thinking to Jesus. Mm. We view him as one who comes in and just rescues us from our problems. We view him as one that comes in as a superhero and saves the day. But the truth is, according to scripture, that's not actually what happens. What actually happens is Jesus doesn't just swoop in and rescue us. He actually enters our suffering with us. Wow. Come on. wow. So he actually enters into the broken circumstances that we're in, and he enters into the broken situations that we're in, and he fixes it from the bottom up. And so we're, we, we're, oftentimes we're, we're perceiving that he's going to come in from the top and grab us and rescue us. But the truth is he enters into the brokenness of humanity, into the depth of the pain, into the depth of the brokenness. And he works from that direction upward and pulls us out of the stuff we're going through from the bottom up. Wow. wow. Come on, and, I like it. And so it's that, that I think that's 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 what many of us deal with when we're facing situations and we're like, God, where are you? God, I don't feel you. God, you're not moving. God, I've got this financial burden. God, I've got this sickness. God, I've got all this stuff that I'm dealing with. Where are you? I don't, I don't see you showing up. And so the definition for the word disappointment is, is you, you have an expectation that is not met. So there's an expectation that you're carrying and you're looking for it to be met and it doesn't get met. So you enter into a place of disappointment. It is a missed appointment. It is a missed expectation that begins to take place. And so many of us walk into disappointment and carry disappointment because we put expectations on God that he, was, that he didn't put. And so we become disappointed in our circumstances because we have created false circumstances in our mind and in our thinking. So we get disappointed because we don't have the true perception of what the situation actually is. Wow. Come on, come on, come on. And so that's why Eugene Peterson talks about it's a gathering together that cleanses our perception so we can see rightly. And so all of us have the ability to be deceived. 
every single one of us. Yes. And so it is through the cleansing of our perception that we see truth rightly and we can connect rightly with truth so that we can begin to enter into the reality that God has for us. So God doesn't show up in false realities. Come on, I like but that. the problem is most of us are living in false realities. That yes, is so true. Yes. Most of us are living in realities we've built in our own minds and, and, and concepts that we've, we've built up in our own thinking. And we're looking for God to show up in specific and certain ways, but we don't know how he shows up because we've never been taught how he actually shows, does show up. Yeah, mm. yeah, come on. And so we hear, you know, you're going to get your breakthrough, you're going to get your breakthrough. And that's absolutely true. But I, I think what happens is most of us come up with our own concept of what that's going to look like. Yes. And most of us picture and imagine what that breakthrough is going to look like. And God, God never consults us when he's going to show up and give a breakthrough. That's right, that's so, right. so our reality and his don't really match up most of the time. We're like, God, all right, this check's going to be in the mail. You're just going to turn it around today. But instead, he's like, listen, I'm going to let you actually suffer through that for three months. And then I'm going to shift it. Because what you're going to learn through the suffering process is greater than what I could have done if I just dropped it on you. Exactly. Woo! Come on, come on. And so God, God, God works with us where we are and works the depth of who we are and what he's called us to do. So I want to promise to every single person that's watching right now, God is moving in your life. Yes, he is. Yes. God is, God is currently at this very moment right now. He's already active and he's already moving in your life in this very moment right now. And so even if you don't feel it, he's, 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 he's at work. Even if you don't see it, he is at work. Even if you feel like my circumstance isn't changing and it's not shifting, he, I promise you in this moment, he is at work. So where's Jesus right now? He's at work. Um, <laughs> He's working. Come on. He's working. He's working right now. He is working. He's working in your midst. He's working on your behalf. He's working in your life right now. Let me read a couple of scriptures for you. <clears throat> Deuteronomy thir uh, 31, verse number six. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be, be in dread of them. For the Lord is... The Lord who goes with you is before you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. And we know that, right? We all heard that. We all understand that. But there are those moments in life that you're looking like, I don't, I don't, I don't see him around. I, I don't feel him right now. Nothing is, is happening right now. And there's the moments where it doesn't seem like he's working. There's those moments when it doesn't seem like anything is happening. So is the scripture, is scripture true? Yeah. Right? Yes. Right. Yes. Is God a liar? No. Right. Oh, so if he man. says he's with us and he never leaves us nor forsakes us, that means that in the moments we don't feel him, he's still present. Wow. I that means that. in the moment we don't see him working, he's still present because he already declared I'm with you and I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so the question is, then where is God? Where is he in those moments that are difficult? Where is he in those moments when I feel forsaken? Where is he in those moments when, when I've got bills due and, and there's finances here? And, and where is he in, the, in, in, in moments where I've got sickness in my body? Where is he in these moments that feel like I'm alone and there's nothing going on? And, and I've got all this stuff. I've got relational difficulties. I've got financial difficulties. I've got, I've got the confusion. I'm trying to struggle. I'm trying to manage life. Where is he? I feel him on Sunday morning, but where is he on Thursday afternoon at 2 p.m.? Uh -huh. Come on. And it's in those moments that we have to learn how to discern and find him in those moments. And I'm going to show you exactly where he is. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with our weakness. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Yes. So the beginning of verse 15 says, 
we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness. But he has been one who is tempted in every way. How was he tempted in every way? He was human, right? So what he did, what God did was he entered into our humanity. He entered into the frailness of human suffering. He entered into the weakness of humanity to help us. And so he steps into the place where he begins to experience every single human feeling that we feel. Every feeling of loneliness, every feeling of brokenness, every feeling of unworthiness, every insecurity that we carry, every single human emotion and human feeling, he stepped into it to experience it with us. So he begins to enter into our suffering so that he could help us from that place of suffering. And so Jesus is with us. He's, he's with us. He's with us so intimately and so uh, connected to us in such a deep, deep way. So Jesus is in our deepest pain. Wow. So in the most painful areas of our heart, him, what he did by becoming a human, he was, he was able to now enter into the deepest parts of our hearts that are filled with pain. He enters into our anxiety. He enters into our fears. He enters into our deepest brokenness. At the core of who we are, he enters into that place. And he finds us in the places, of, the darkest places of our hearts. He finds us in the wickedness of our, our, of our own thoughts. He finds us in the most manipulative places of our hearts. He is present in the midst of that. So, so sometimes we're like, man, I need to fix myself up. I need to look good. I need to be holy. I need to be righteous. He calls us to that. But guess what? In the middle of our brokenness, he's still there. And so sometimes we think our, our goodness is what makes him present. No, 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 no. He's drawn to our absolute brokenness. He is drawn to the worst parts of us. He is drawn to the parts of us we don't want to tell people about. He is drawn to the parts of the thoughts we don't want to ever say out of our mouth to another human being. He is in the middle of those parts of us, in the brokenest parts of us, in the evilest parts of us, in the wickedest parts of any one of us. He is present. He has fully committed to make his home inside of us. And we are not rejected by our brokenness. We are deeply, deeply accepted by our brokenness by him. So he enters into the very brokenness of humanity to redeem us from the inside out. And so understanding this process and understanding how he deeply connects with us. Uh, Psalms uh, 139, it talks about, Lord, you, you know me. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. God, on the mountaintop, you're there. In the valley, you're there. And he says, you, David says, you know my thoughts are far when they are far off. And what that actually means is God is so deeply inside of us that he knows our thinking processes. So he can tell you so he, watch this now. So God is, he's, God, is, God, is, God is outside of time. So he's in the future and he's in the past right now. He's currently present in our future and he's currently present in our past. Ah, that's right. And he knows it all, right? And he knows it all from being outside of time. But at the same time, he's inside of time because he's in this moment with us right now. And he's fully experiencing the brokenness we're feeling right now. But he's at the same time, he's looking at us completely whole and completely delivered in the future. Jesus. And so our brokenness in this moment, he's present in it and he's not afraid of it because he's already sees us what he's going to do. And the, he already sees us in a finished work. He already sees us in a finished product. He already sees us completely healed, completely whole, completely restored. He already sees us in that place. But in the midst of the brokenness, as we're still walking that process out, he's in the middle of that walking with us. And so He's so intimately a part of us that he's in the synapses of our brain. Yes, they talk about how, how we think, how, how if you look on an MRI machine and they watch our brain waves go, go back and forth, literally God is in the brain waves. 
So he's in, he's so a part of how we think, he's so a part of who we are that he's intricately concerned with every process of, of who we are. He so tied himself to us. So the scripture understanding, he'll never leave us or forsake it. He can't. He actually cannot leave us or forsake us. He actually doesn't possess the ability to leave us nor forsake us. Wow. I love it. He couldn't walk away if he wanted to. Jeez. Because he is so tied into us. He is so tied into the very human DNA. That he, 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 he literally cannot be separated from us. He doesn't know how to separate himself from us. So we might feel lonely, but I promise you, you're not lonely. I promise you. And I feel like there's some people watching right now that are struggling with loneliness. Let me tell you something. You might feel lonely because of your circumstance and your situation, but that is a straight up lie. Because you are fully surrounded by the one who has not left you since the moment of your birth when you took your first breath and the one who will not leave you till you take your last breath and they put you in the ground. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You've actually never been alone. Yes, God. You don't actually know what loneliness is. My God. What you perceive as loneliness is the lie of the enemy to you. Because he's never left us, nor for, or he never will leave us, or he never will forsake us. He's fully present with us consistently. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. And so, in our hardest moments, when we're looking for him and we feel like he's not present, what he actually does in those moments is he goes deep. We're looking for him out here, but he's actually going deeper inside of us to those places of pain because he wants to heal it from the inside out. So when we're like, God, where are you? Where are you? He's like, I am right here. I'm actually going deeper inside of you right now to work my way out and bring healing and bring manifestation of that to begin to take place inside of you. So God is actually the bedrock of who we are, the core of who we are, at the bottom of who we are, it is him. It literally is him. You can't, and you can't go any deeper than the bedrock. He's the foundation of every single part of our lives. So pain might be here. Your, your pain, your discouragement, all the stuff you might be dealing with is right here. But underneath all that is the bedrock is him. Yes. So you push through all that. The only thing you're going to hit is him. At the end of the day, it is him at the bottom. It is him at the bottom of who you are. It is him at the core of who you are. So any other discomfort that you feel at the end of the day, at the underneath all that, all that is surface. Because at the core of who you are, the core of what God's doing in your life is him. It is him. It is him. It is him. It is him. <laughs> And so no matter what discouragement you're feeling right now, I promise you, you can't get any deeper than that. You can't get any deeper than him. Whatever discouragement you're feeling, whatever, whatever uh, hard situation you're feeling right now, I can tell you underneath all of that is the presence of God. Underneath that is him. He's the foundation. He's the rock of every single situation in our lives. And our difficulties might try to look bigger than they really are. Because he's actually bigger than every difficulty and every discomfort that we're facing and that we're dealing with. Wow. And he is fully present with us and fully present in every single one of our lives. And so we see on the cross, <clears throat> when Jesus is on the cross and he's hanging there and the thief says, you know, remember me. When he says, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Yes. I mean, what Jesus was doing in that moment was showing I'm taking on human suffering. I'm embodying every suffering any human being will ever go through. I am fully entering into that suffering by going to the cross. Yes. Um, psychologist uh, Jordan Peterson actually talks about uh, the story of, of, of Jesus and the crucifixion. He says, you actually cannot tell a more horrific and painful story than the, pain, than the story of the cross. He says, you literally cannot tell or create a more horrific story than the story of the cross. He says, he says psychologically, because of human psych psychology, the, the, the pain points of every human being, Jesus endured every single one of them in the cross. So for example, with Judas, so Judas betrays him, right? So what's, what, what's one of the worst injustices? You know, if you see if you see someone go through something difficult and you're like, you know what, that person kind of deserved that. They were they weren't the nicest person. You know, that happened to them. And you're just like, well, they kind of deserve that. 
But what breaks our hearts is when we see someone go through something we know they didn't deserve. We're like, man, that, that, man, that guy is so nice. That guy is so whatever. Wow, man, he went through such a hard thing. And that's exactly what happened to Jesus. Jesus didn't do anything wrong. But he suffered betrayal by one of his closest disciples. Like th picture, th think about your own life right now. Think about if you were betrayed by someone so close to you, how that would break your heart, right? And Jesus experienced deep, deep betrayal. He knows what that feels like. He endured it himself. Yes. And he chose to experience it, to identify with us. Like the rest of us, we're just born into this world and we're experiencing life, right? We didn't choose any of this. We're just like, we got here, mom and daddy brought me here, here I am, I'm in, I'm in this world. Yes. But God who was outside of time, outside of all this, he did not have to enter into this. He didn't have to experience any pain. He chose to enter into pain for the purpose of redeeming us. And so he enters into our place of pain so that he can pull us out from that deep place, from the inside out. He works from the inside out. But so many of us are trying to fix things from the outside in. But he works from the inside out. And so if we're looking for God on the outside, we're going to miss him, that he's actually deep within inside of us, working through us and working his way out of us. Mm -hmm. So God works from deep within inside of us. So one way to look at this is one of the early church fathers, Irenaeus, he says, Jesus cannot heal anything he does not assume. And what he means by that is what he doesn't take on himself, he can't heal and he can't restore. And so for us to be able to come into a place of healing and restoration, God has to take on our brokenness to bring us into a place of healing and to bring us into a place of wholeness. And so whatever you're facing right now, whatever you're dealing with right now, I want you to know God understands what you're dealing with. God understands all the family dynamics, God understands all the thoughts you have in your mind. God understands all the pain that's there. He understands every single part of the process that you are dealing with. He understands and he knows it. Yes, he does. Come on. And he is with you in the middle of the difficulty. He is with you in the middle of the pain. He is with you in the middle of the brokenness. He's with you in the middle of all of the processes to bring you to a place of healing and bring you to a place of restoration. I want to share this story with you. So this happened to me uh, last year, at the end of last year. You know, I, I, I was doing some errands and, and finishing some stuff up at, at my house. And then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go out and grab some food because I didn't want to cook anything. And so I... I was on my way to, to one restaurant to just go to fast food place to go grab some food. And so as I'm, as I'm driving out there, I just kind of felt this nudge to stop at this, this, this Mexican restaurant that's a little bit closer to my house. And I was like, man, you know, I, I, I don't know why I feel drawn to this, but because I had another plan, I'm going a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And so I get into this restaurant and they're like, how many, how many, you know, and I'm like one. Let me just say this, sitting in a restaurant by yourself and eating is super awkward. I don't know. I know, I know some people can do it, but for me, I'm like, just sitting at a table by yourself. I don't know. That feels very, very awkward to me. And so I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable and I'm just like, God, what am I doing here? Like, you know, what, what am I, what am I, why am I here? And so they sit me, they sit me at this table and I'm, I'm sitting there and, and I'm looking at the menu and ordering or whatever. And this lady uh, this older lady comes in, they, she sits at, at like an, a diagonal from me at another table. Um, this older lady, she's sitting by herself and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm just kind of, you know, I just noticed her. I'm kind of just in my own world. And I just feel this prompting, hey, go sit, go, go, go sit with her. And I was like, mm -mm. That's, that's, no, that's weird. I'm not going to go sit with someone I don't know. Like that is, that is completely 
weird. And so I'm be honest with you. You know, most people tell you their glory stories and they're like, I did this and then God showed up. Listen, I chickened out. Okay. I chickened out. Come on. I, I chickened out and I was like, mm, I ain't doing that. That's weird. And so I, I didn't do it. But what I decided to do was like, I'm gonna pay for her meal. And so when I was done, you know, I got the weight and I paid for her meal. And on my way out, I stopped by and said, hey, lady, I just want you to know, you know, your meal's taken care of. Have a good night. God bless you, blah, blah, blah. And her, she teared up. And she was like, oh, thank you. That was so kind of you. You didn't have to do that. And I was like, just be blessed. And so on my way walking out, this other couple walks up and like, oh my gosh, we just saw what you did for that lady. That was so kind. That was so sweet. Wow, wow. And they're like, wow, that, you know, that we've never seen anyone do something so kind. And I was like, oh, thank you. Bless you, whatever. I didn't really think much about it, right? And the next day I'm praying. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord starts to speak. And he said, which the interesting thing, but at this, at this specific moment, I've, I've been studying on communion and I've been studying on the Eucharist and understanding communion uh, 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 from a deeply biblical place, right? And so th uh, that's what that's happening. And so the Lord speaks to me and he says, do you know, do you realize you, you, you celebrated communion at, that, at the restaurant last night? And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and he said, you were sitting there and you were in a lonely place. Wow. That lady was sitting there and she was in a lonely place. And I was in the middle of that situation. I was there in the midst with both of you. Wow. And he said, I caused you to meet a need that she had. I used you to do it. And she, in her gratitude, met a need that you had. And the Lord's like, I showed up in that situation to meet you right where you were. And all of a sudden, like, it just kind of, my mind was blown in that moment. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I saw how God entered into that situation, into my place of pain, where I was feeling lonely. And he caused me to do something to bless somebody else that shifted that place inside of me. And so sometimes we're looking for God to show up in certain ways, and he's showing up in the little ways. He's showing up in the ways that's easily ignorable. He's showing up in the ways that, that we can easily miss if we're not quite paying attention to how he's showing up. I, I didn't think anything about it, just like, hey, I'm blessed this lady, pay for a meal, whatever. And didn't really realize until later when God opened my eyes, that was him in the midst of all of that. And so I want to encourage you wherever you are, whatever you're dealing with right now, God is in the middle of it. And God has a plan to get you through it. My God. Your job in this season is to surrender. Ooh, yeah. Your job is to let him do it. It is to yield and to let him do it. And so in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God works by tension, okay? It works by two two truths at the same time being absolutely true, but they're at tension with one another. What do I mean by that? I mean by God says, without works, your faith is dead, right? But at the same time, God says, hey, rest in me, abide in me, let me do it. Which one is true? Wow. Both at the exact same time. So we have to learn to do works, but also rest at the exact same time. Mm to really enter into the things of God. And so that's why, some, so our relationship has to be so deeply connected and personal with God, because if we try to practice principles without the connection, we're gonna miss it. And so you have to be connected to know which principle to function in at, the, at, at any given moment. And so what I really feel for sense for many of you right now, this is a season of rest. Many of you have been striving and trying to accomplish things, trying to hit goals, trying to meet needs, trying to get out of situations you're in. I, what I really sense right now is it's season of rest. Mm. God's like, hey, listen, you've done all you can do. Stop. Wow. Let me do it now. Let me work on your behalf. Let me bring you through. Let me carry you through. Give up the, the, the false realities of breakthrough that you have. Give up the, the superhero mentality that you have. Yeah. Give up those things that you, you're perceiving that's the only way I'm going to work. 
if you give that up, you'll actually see how I am working. Because those things, those ideas and those concepts blind us from seeing where God is actually moving. Yes, God. And blind us from seeing what God is actually doing. And so I want to encourage you, God is at work. He's at work in your life right now. The key is us getting our perceptions cleansed so that we can fully see where he's working and see what he's doing in our lives because he's working. And so if we don't see where he's working, we're going to put our energy and our strength and all of our striving into the wrong places. But if we catch where he's working, we can let go and be like, lead me, lead me. I'm going with you. You're leading, you're opening this door. I'm walking through this door. Or we're going to spend our time knocking on doors that he has locked and he's not opening. And we're going to be mad and we're going to be disappointed. And we're going to be like, ah, I'm warring, I'm praying, I'm fighting. And the devil's trying to hold me back. No, you at the wrong door. It ain't the devil. You trying to unlock the wrong door when God's got a door that's open, wide open over here for you. But because you're thinking, I need to walk through this one. It needs to be this way. It needs to be that way. Listen, give up what you think life should be like. Give up what you think things should be and enter into what's before you. Enter into what he's already set before you. Because when you enter into what's set before you, you'll see how he's moving, you'll see how he's working, and you can follow his footsteps into what he has for you. Yes. And, I can, and, I, and I can say this from personal experience, because I've strived, I've tried to do things in my own strength. I've tried to, to, to accomplish things certain ways, but it's when I let go and said, okay, Lord, what are you doing? Okay, God, I feel like you're taking me the opposite direction of the direction I think I should be going. But once I started following him in that uncomfortable place of going the direction, I didn't feel like, God, God, we're going backwards. But he's like, no, we're going the right way. Your flesh thinks it's backwards because your flesh wants it to be a certain way. Your ego wants it to be a certain way. Your pride wants it to be a certain way. But I'm leading you the way of humility. I'm leading you the way of truth. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the way. There is no other way but me. Let me show you the way because I am the way. And so it's in the yielding and it's in the giving up that I begin to follow him into the way that he has for me. And once I start doing that, boom, things start happening that I have no control over. Things start happening that I couldn't even imagine. But it's it's completely in the surrender. It's completely in the giving up of what I want and understanding Listen, he's with me. He's with me at the core of my being. He's with me at the depths of who I am. He is with me and he is leading me if I stop fighting him, (laughs) if I stop resisting him. And so through these processes, I've watched how God has done things in my life over this last season that has set me up to enter into breakthrough and to enter into new things that he has for me. So I want to encourage you right now. Listen, God is on your side. He is fighting for you. He is with you. He has breakthrough prepared for you. He has opportunities and doors set before you. It's just a season to let go and to yield. Go with the flow. Go with where he's leading you. Some, I feel, I feel like there's some people that uh, there's certain things you're holding on to that he's saying, let go. Yes. Because what, when you let go, he has something way better than what you're holding on to. And you can't see the better yet because you won't let go. And I'm telling you, when you let go, what he's going to put in your hand is going to be a thousand times greater than what you've given up. Because in the kingdom, there is no loss. So anything you give up for him, you're going to receive greater for it. Anything you let go of for him, you're going to receive greater for it. And so I want to prophesy over you right now yes. corporately the lord saying this is a fresh new season of you following me into breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough god says it's easy there's a fresh grace coming on you to take the steps of faith to step into victory and breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough and opportunities that you couldn't even imagine and doors you couldn't even try to open if you wanted them to god is going to favor you in this fresh way over this next season as you let go 
and you trust how he's leading you and how he's guiding you. I want to go ahead and minister to uh, Pastor Shannon and, and the woman of God. I really just, I really just sense for you guys right now. Hallelujah. That this, this, this is a real new season. You know, we, we hear those words and they sound good and they sound exciting. No, but this truly is a new season. Yes. And what I feel like the spirit wants you to understand is in a new season, you're going to have to grieve the old season. Because the new season is not going to look anything like the old one. Wow. And so there is going to be some loss. But the loss is so that you can let go of the old to embrace the new, to walk into the new with everything you need for the new season. Get ready for change. Get ready for things to be uncomfortable because you're gonna find yourself in new places, places that you've never been before. You know, it's just like any new skill that you learn. The first time you try that skill, you're like, this don't make no sense. I don't know what I'm doing. But when you keep practicing, all of a sudden you master that skill. I feel like God is opening some opportunities for you to step into some new things, but you're going to feel uncomfortable at first because it's going to be so unfamiliar to you. But the Lord says, stick with it. And I'm training you with new skills. I'm training you with new abilities. And because you're going to function in brand new places. A year from now, you're going to look back and you're going to be like, what in the world? How did we end up here? How did God do this in our lives? And you're going to be surrounded by people that you're going to be like, how is that my friend now? How is that my friend now? How am I around this kind of people? I've never been around these kind of people before, but you're going to find a, a place that's going to fit because you've been carved out for this new season. You've been shaped for this new season. God's been, God's been planning and preparing you for this day and for this hour. I feel like there are things that have been deep within both of your hearts that it's a time of fulfillment. It is a time that God wants to fulfill what he's put inside of your heart, the dreams that he's put inside of your heart, the giftings that's been put inside of your heart. God says, listen, I've made an investment into both of you. I've made an investment of gifts. I've made a gift of investments of skills. I've made investments of abilities. And I want you to know I, it's harvest time. God says, I'm not a bad investor. When I invest, I expect an return on my investment. So God says, I'm going to cause there to be a return on everything I planted inside of you, everything I put inside of you, every gift, every ability, every skill set I put inside of you, I'm going to use it. I'm going to bring it to a place of being used and function. And even for uh, Shannon, I just feel like even some of the jobs that you had over the last 10, 15 years that now you can be like, what the world was I doing that for? Why, why did I have that job? That don't make no sense. But, I, but, but God says, listen, I put you in the pit. I put you in some situations so you could acquire some skills for your next season. And you weren't going to get those skills if you didn't work those jobs. You weren't going to get those skills if you didn't do some of those tasks that you thought were completely ridiculous. <laughs> but God is putting some skill sets inside of you and some things that you learned in those situations that God is going to use in the future that you're going to be like, my God, if I, didn't, if I didn't go through that, I would not be able to handle this right now, or I wouldn't have the ability to manage what God's put inside of me. So get ready. God says, I will redeem every single thing and I will restore everything. Nothing is lost. Nothing is, 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 is unprofitable. Everything is profitable and everything will serve you, says the Lord. And the Lord says that daughter, that God says, it's a, there's a fresh insight of vision that I'm releasing inside of you. There's a fresh insight of vision, not only of, 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 of what you're seeing around you, but a fresh insight of vision of who you are. God says, you don't even fully know who you are. And God says, I'm causing you to see yourself in a fresh way. There's a shift of perception that God's taking place inside of you because you need to see yourself the way God sees you so that you can possess everything that God has for you. And God says, I'm bringing you through that season. I feel like there's also some things from the past that God says, I'm breaking off the last little bit of remnants of that. It's more like uh, the enemy has tried to, to throw some stuff at you and, and to taunt you. Well, you know, you said that you did that. You did that, 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 that. God says today, I silence the voice of the 
I cut off the last minute of the, the, the tormenting voice that tried to come at you. And God says, daughter, you will live and not die. Every assignment of death that's been come against you, God says, I break it off today. And God says, long life is your portion. Health is your portion, says the Lord. And the Lord says, dreams and visions will, are going to flow. Opportunities are going to flow. A victory is going to flow. Breakthrough is going to flow. And God says, financial increase is coming. Open doors are coming. Opportunities are coming. God says, embrace what I'm doing. It's a whole new season, says the Lord. It's a whole new season. It's a whole new day. No, God says, don't look back anymore. Do not look back. I've closed the door of the past. Not only have I closed it, I've broken the lock. There's no going back. There's no looking back. You're in a new place. You're in a whole new season, says the Lord. Son and daughter, get ready. Get ready. I'm bringing people in. I'm bringing them 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 in. Even the ones that are broken. Right now, I'm seeing... I, I literally I literally don't know where you guys are. I don't know where your church is. I, I don't know. But I'm seeing like this apartment complex that's close to the church. And I'm seeing God's going to God's going to cause favor on you guys to go into this apartment complex. And there are broken people in this apartment complex that your ministry got literally where you're planted is for a specific reason. You're planted. I, I just see this apartment complex and God's going to use the people in this place are going to fill your church. They're, they're going to be your ministry. They're going to be the ones that's going to, that's going to begin to come in and God's going to use you to minister to them. I literally, I I'm seeing like this single mom and she's weeping and she's crying and she's like, God, I need help. I'm broken. I'm broken. And God's going to use you guys to begin to connect. So I don't, I don't know if, if your guys are already doing some kind of ministry in, in some local apartments, but I see there's something really, really close to the church. And that's going to be the first fruit of harvest that's going to begin to take place you're 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 literally right there where you need to be and i feel like even personal stories that you both have your stories they're going to be able to connect to your stories they're going to be able to identify with and they're going to be able to trust you they're going to say we've been hurt by church we've been hurt by ministry but we can trust you guys you got i feel like you are like us you you know what it's like to be hurting you know what it's like to walk through difficulty and god says you're going to have the words of life inside of them uh, inside of your mouth your, your mouth is filled with the words of life for these people. And I just see God bringing them in and ministry beginning to take place out of that. Get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm bringing them in, says the Lord. Amen, amen. I know I see some people on the Zooms right now. Let me go ahead and minister. That's Minister Henry Jackson. Um, I want to minister to you, sir. And Henry, I, ju I, just, I just hear the Lord saying that, son, my hand is on you. My hand is on you. And there have been seasons in your life where you felt like no one's hand was on you. You felt like no one wanted to be close to you. You felt like more than anything else, everyone wanted to let go of you. No one wanted to claim you. You felt like more than anything else, people wanted to reject you. You felt like there are some people that walked away. But I hear the Lord saying, son, my hand is on you. And the Lord says, I'm touching you in a fresh way in this season of your life. And God says, there's a turnaround that is coming deep within your heart that I'm taking place. God says relationships that were broken in the past, I'm causing there to be restoration to begin to take place. For what the enemy tried to use to destroy you, God says, I use it as fuel to propel you. But God says, now I'm going to cause there to be a restoration of relationships, a restoration of, of, of family, a restoration of connecting of some things that's going to begin to take place in this season. The Lord says, son, get ready for what I'm doing in your life. There's a turnaround coming. There's a shift that's beginning to take place. I feel like there's also this deep cry that's been in your heart towards God. It's been like, God, I'm going to serve you. God, I'm going to follow you. And you have a real servant's heart. You have a heart to, to, to really serve others and to give to others. And the Lord says, that's my heart inside of you. You're carrying my heart. You're carrying my heart of service. You're carrying my heart for, for others. And God's saying, son, the way that you have served others, God says, I want you to know I'm serving you. Wow. Yeah. God says, I'm, I'm pouring into you. I'm serving you. And God's saying, there's some things that's going to happen within the next several weeks where God's going to confirm some favor on your life. And God's going to open up some things that you didn't even think were possible for you. I feel like there's some, uh, there's some decisions that you're trying to make right now. There's some things that you're weighing. You're kinda, you kind of There's two things that you're, you're pulling back and forth. And, and you've kind of talked yourself into one and talked yourself out of, out of one and gone back and forth uh, and trying to make some decisions. But I hear the Lord saying that in, 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 in counsel, there's wisdom. 
And God's saying, trust the voices around you. Trust the people that he's put inside of you to give you advice and to speak into that situation. Because I feel like there's, there's some questions that's deep inside of your heart that you don't even know you're asking yet. But the Lord says, I'm going to confirm some things as you connect to the ones I put around you with wise counsel that's going to reveal some things, bring some understanding, bring some clarity, and prepare you for the future that I have for you. Amen. Bless you, man. You're welcome. Is that Daquan? Yes, sir. All right. How you doing? I'm blessed, brother. How you doing tonight? Look at yeah. that epic beard, though. That beard is like, I mean, I'm jealous. I'm jealous because mine is all splotchy. Like, mine doesn't come in that epic, you know? See, mine didn't used to. It didn't used to. Like, I have a yearbook where you can see, like, baby face all up until high school. Okay, okay. So there's hope for me, then. There's hope. What are you doing? What are you doing? I, had to, I always had to keep shaving, man. I had to keep shaving. I had to keep shaving. Okay. Keep shaving. And so what I feel like I actually brought, I mean, I, I was making humor out of that, but what I really felt like there's that scripture it talks about the oil is poured on Aaron's head and it drips down his beard and it drips down his robe. And the Lord says, I am pouring fresh oil on you. God says, I am pouring fresh oil on you. The areas that have been dry, I'm refreshing. The areas that have been hard, I'm lubricating. I'm, I'm, I'm strengthening you. I'm giving you grace right now. And the Lord says, in the areas where your heart has been broken, God says, I'm putting the pieces back together in a way that you that others will never even know if there was ever any every brokenness. God says, I'm a God who restores not just just just. The, the minimal, but God says, I restore fully. I restore and I make whole again. The Lord says, this is a season of wholeness for you. He's mm. making you whole. And I feel like you've had some, uh, some dreams over the last little bit that have made you a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and, 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 and you've kind of been concerned about them. But I hear the Lord saying, you don't have to be concerned. God says, it's the enemy trying to stir up places of fear and places of uncertainty to torment you. But the Lord mm. said, none of that is actually true. You know, it's like, it's like if you, uh, uh, they, they say if you're being attacked by a bear, go raw and like kind of make yourself, well, it depends what kind of bear, make yourself bigger. Mm -hmm. so what, that's what the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to make himself look bigger than he actually is. And mm -hmm. so that circumstance is actually just to intimidate you. There's actually no power there. Okay. It's just to intimidate you. Thank and God's God. saying, son, I want you to, to trust in me that I got you. And I'm breaking every place of torment off of you. I'm breaking every place of fear off of you. And I'm bringing mm -hmm. that deep, deep peace. Yeah. I feel like there's also uh, just some, how's your relationship with your mom? It's... Mm. That's a good question. <laughs> like she helps me out when she can, but like it's like it's I, I don't I don't I don't know how how to describe it. Like just it's not where I wanted to be. I'll say that. I, but yeah, 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 yeah. What I I really feel like God's doing a work there inside of her, and there's some things that happened when you grew up that hurt mm -hmm. your heart, and it's been a little bit hard for you. Mm -hmm. Um, but but God wants you to know she didn't know what she was doing. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she did the best she can, she could, okay? And I feel like God wants you to really forgive and to let that go. And God, mm. says, as you do that, he's gonna begin to restore the relationship in a deeper way and in the way that it needs to be. And God says, I'm gonna bring some alignment. I'm gonna bring that into to right order. And God says, when the enemy really would try to play on those pain points, mm -hmm. God wants to bring healing and restoration into that area. Wow. Amen. Bless you, sir. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Sierra, Sierra Outlaw. I mean, that's an interesting name, <laughs> last name. <laughs> Sierra, are you at a place where you can turn your camera on? She may not be that's actually our daughter okay okay no, no problem no okay no problem that's all good it's all good i still i'm gonna still minister to you uh and what i really felt i felt like actually i just saw this picture kind of you in a boat and the boat's kind of going up and down up and down with the waves 
and and you're holding on to the side of the boat and there's a part of you that's saying god would you just stabilize the boat already i don't like this up and down I, I really don't like this back and forth I, I i want it to be stable but the lord's saying that are that is a part of the process yeah it's a part of the process of the, what i'm doing in your life okay let me let me say this I'm, i'll give you this analogy so if you ever if you've ever seen a heart monitor and how a heartbeat goes, it goes like this: boop, up, down, up, down. And so your heart actually rests in the down and then goes up. So your heart rests for just a couple seconds in between beats. That's how it works. But the only time you have a straight line is when you're dead. Hmm. So to be alive is the up and down. So you don't want you don't want the stabilizing and the flat line. There's a part of you that's saying, God, just just make everything just. Uh, uh, uh. But God's saying, daughter, I have you in a process of life. You're in life. Yeah. I have life for you. Not only do I have life, but I have life more abundantly for you. God says you're in a process of life right now. And God says, I'm working that process for you in the up and the down, in the up and the down, in the up and the down. God says, embrace the journey. Come on. And I'm leading you through it. If you, God says, as you, as you begin to learn to flow with me, you won't be afraid of the ups and the downs. You'll just hang on and, and ride the wave. And this is really a season where I feel like God's teaching you a greater level of maturity and a greater level of embracing and trusting him. There's a part of you, and I, and I know why, I'm not going to say it publicly, but there's a part of you that's afraid to give up control because of things that have happened in the past. But God's saying, trust him yes, and, and let him have control because as you do you're gonna you're gonna enjoy the ride more when you trust him but if you're trying to figure it out if you're trying to make it happen it's going to be way harder than it needs to be and i know it's difficult because of some things that you've walked through and that you've experienced but the lord says i'm causing there to be a process of healing that's going to take place deep with inside of your heart to heal the past, to heal what was, and to bring you into a full place of restoration. God says, I, my, God says, I'm not a God who leaves people broken. God says, I heal the broken. And God says, I'm going to the broken places of your heart, the broken places of your life. And God says, I am healing. I am healing. Right now, I'm healing. Right now, I'm restoring. But God says, trust the process I have you in. It is a healing process. It is a process of healing that you're in. You know, if you go to the doctor, if you, if you, if you break your arm and you go to the doctor, the doctor is going to touch that arm because he has to touch it to put you in a cast to heal it. And that just his touch is going to hurt. And so even though the process of healing is, is what is the process of healing, there is still some pain that does take place in a process of healing, because God says, I have to come in and touch it, so I can fix it to heal you. And so part of you is like, God, don't touch me, God, don't touch me. But God's saying, daughter, if you want me to heal you, you're going to have to let me come in and touch you to bring that healing. God's saying, there is grace for your walk, there's grace for where you are, and I'm going to bring you into a place of full full healing says the lord amen 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 well let me let me close by just sharing this so the concept of jesus coming to us is you know oftentimes we we, we look at our christianity this way we look at i'm a sinner he went to the cross what he did on the cross redeems me, it saves me, and it puts me right with God, right? That's how often we look at it, right? But here, here's, 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 here's what's not completely accurate about that, is Jesus didn't just come to redeem us, but the life of Jesus is the example of what our life is. And so each one of us have to go to the cross, See, Jesus didn't, Jesus going to the cross doesn't replace us going to the cross. Jesus going to the cross is showing us the way through life. He's saying, listen, this is the way it is. And I'm the first fruits. 
I'm the first one to show you how to, to do this. So we each are gonna go through a cross experience. Every single one of us are gonna have our own cross experience. We're gonna have our own suffering moments. But those processes are in our lives to get us to resurrection. My God. There couldn't be a resurrected Christ without a cross. And there cannot be a resurrected us without a cross. That's why he literally said in scripture, he said, pick up your cross daily. I'm teaching you the way. I'm teaching you the way to life. So here, the, the cross, when we look at it naturally, it is an instrument of death, okay? The cross is an instrument of death. It is, it, is, it is a torture device designed to torture the human body until it dies. And so Jesus is saying, through death, through torture, through pain, through difficulty, I will produce life. So through your cross experience, he will produce life in your life. He will produce supernatural resurrected life through your life. Through every difficulty, through every pain you've gone through, that is where he is going to produce life. That's why I was talking from the beginning. What he does is he enters into the worst parts of the human psyche, the worst parts of our human experience, to so the core of that pain. And he, from that place, he works himself out and produces life inside of us. But here's, okay, picture it this way. Picture, let me try to think of a good way. This is this, okay, this, I don't know. I'm, I'm working through this analogy. Okay, if, if, if you've ever seen like, a, they show in slow motion like a bullet and it shoots through glass and the glass shatters, right? Yes. And you watch the shatter take place. Now picture the opposite, okay? Picture Jesus as that bullet that comes and the shattered broken places. When he hits it, he goes through it and he restores it all. He brings it all back together. But the only way he brings it back together is going to the source of the pain and the source of the brokenness. And from that point, he starts to bring it back together. So he goes to the deepest parts of us, which is shattered and broken. And then he starts to sew us up from the inside out. And he comes out and he makes us whole through that process. Each of us are in a process of being made whole. Each of us are in a process of God restoring. He is the risen Christ, but he's also the rising Christ. What does that mean? It means our salvation is actually an active thing that is taking place continually. You know, sometimes we think of it, you go down, the, you go down to the altar, you pray the prayer, you're saved now, you're good. Actually, that's just the beginning. That's actually the beginning of your salvation process. From that point forward, you have to walk it out. So it is, so consider, he, that's why it's like, you view him as a rising Christ. He's risen, it's already finished. But for us that's living and walking through this, he's a rising Christ working through us and working a process in our lives that's taking place. So I want to encourage you right now. God is at work in your life. Even if you don't feel it, even if you don't see it, even if it's painful, even if you're like, God, this is hell, this sucks, I hate every bit of this. He's at work in the pain. He's at work in the midst of the brokenness. He's at work in the middle of the hard situations. He is at work restoring, healing, and delivering you from that place of pain and hurt. So let me just go ahead and pray for you right now. So Father, right now, I just thank you that you're a God who heals. I thank you that you're a God who restores. I thank you you're a God who is touched by our infirmities. I thank you that you're a God who is touched by our brokenness. So Lord, I just thank you that right now you're at work in each of every one of our lives. So Father, everyone that's watching, everyone that's listening, everyone that's gonna watch a replay, I pray right now, Lord, that you would open their eyes and they would be able to see where you are at work in their life, that they would be able to see how you're restoring, how you're working, and what you're doing. So, Father, we just release that now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Turn it over to the man and woman of God. Yes. God bless you, Prophet. We also have um, Minister 
David and Minister Yolanda on if God has given you a word, if you can just speak to me. Sure. Sure. See them. Okay, I see them now. Yeah. Uh, looks like the audio is connecting. Um, can you guys come on camera? We see the guys a little bit, but if they can come on. Well, while they're doing that, I uh, hope they can come on camera. Uh, I just want to talk to everyone who is actually on Facebook right now. Um, this has been an amazing uh, ministry. And for those of you who are on Zoom, I'll be able to give it to you later. But we want to be able to uh, sow into the man of God. Uh, am I coming in clear or is it coming? Y'all can hear me okay? There's a little hum, but yeah, we can hear you. There's a little hum. Okay. Yeah. It's, sometimes I can't get rid of that hum. Um, Hold on, let me see something. I'll just, I'll just talk without it for right now. Okay. It's raining here, so it's kind of hard. But can you hear me now? Yep. Pretty good? Okay, good. Okay. Um, so what I, for uh, everybody who's on Facebook, I just posted Prophet Francis Cash App on there. Listen, we want to be able to bless the man of God for giving an amazing, when I say amazing word today, um, please, I want you guys to really bless this um, mighty man of God. Um, his cash app is Jermaine A. Francis, and that is his cash app, and I did pin it already um, to the bottom of the screen. Listen, for those of you who really can, um, you know, bless the man of God with $50. Please do so. If you can give more than $50, absolutely do that. Hey, we got Sierra. She actually got a chance to get on. <laughs> hey, daughter. Did you receive the word that the man of God gave? Yes. <laughs> Did it make sense? Sound like something you heard before? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> daughter you know prophet you were spot on and we're so grateful because we, we have not shared not one thing with you in reference mm -hmm. to our situation and mm -hmm. um the living situation and all kinds of stuff so um you were spot on we were from god we praise god and even with myself me personally, that that word was spot on. Um, even this week, you know, um, it just brought so much confirmation to what God had told me this week, what I experienced, and then what God told me this week, and then what God spoke to my husband to tell me. Like it was just so spot on, and I just praise God for the word. The word was amazing. It was a blessing to my life, um, all those things. And, you know, um, even with Minister Henry, um, Brother Daquan, yes. when I tell you spot on, you were spot on because this is all confirmation that what we've been telling them within the last, I say, what, six months? Within mm -hmm. the last six months. Definitely for the past month or two. Sure. Yeah, definitely for the last two months, it has been like something we have been beating into them, you know, spiritually. And when I say spot on, spot on. So we just, we so praise God for the word. Amazing, amazing. I learned mm -hmm. so much how God just comes from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. Come on. That right there was so amazing. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say thank you, man of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes, guys. Yes, guys. All right, so I don't. I don't think that. Uh, yeah, I don't think that they. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that they can come on. Yeah, I don't think they can come on. Okay, can they hear me though? Um. Yes, they can hear you. Though. They can hear me. Okay. All right. Then that's fine. That's all right. 
All right, so for David and Yolanda, um, what I, I just, what I'm really feeling is actually to see this picture of a uh, seed uh, in the ground. And it's felt like that seed's been planted there for a while and it's been like waiting to take root. Um, and every time it's tried to take root, something's happened. Every time it's, it's, it's thought, okay, this is the moment. This is the, this, is the, this is the time of breakthrough. Something's about to happen. And then something opposite happens that delays the process. And I hear the Lord saying there's been a lot of discouragement. There's been a lot of uh, almost false starts to, to some situations. But I hear the Lord saying that this is a season where God says, I am breaking the assignment that the enemy has tried to put on you to hold you back. And the Lord says the generational curses, I am breaking them. I am shattering them, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I want you to know that a whole new cycle is beginning in your life today. A whole new cycle is beginning today where there was a cycle of of, of being almost kind of trapped going around the mountain, around the mountain. God says, I'm breaking that off today. And God says, I'm causing you not just to go around the mountain at the same level, but God says, I'm causing you to climb the mountain. This is a, a time where you're going to begin to climb the mountain. You're going to begin to ascend. You're going to break through the limitations. You're going to break through the things that have held you back. And God's saying, I'm doing a deep work within both of your hearts even now. I hear the Lord saying where, where the enemy tried to cause almost some some conflicts to be there. God says, I'm causing there to be a grace to work through those conflicts. I'm causing there to be a grace that God says, you're going to be able to even understand each other in, in a new way and be able to see each other in a, in a fresh way. And God's saying that you're going to see that I'm in the middle of it. Wow. God says, I'm in the middle of both of your hearts. I'm in the middle of both of, of, of the, the situation. And God says, I am working all things together for your good, says the Lord. God says, you're going to begin to see some stuff begin to happen within the family that's going to cause the family to come into right alignment. Where there's been conflict, where there's been difficulty, where there's been resistance. God says, I'm breaking through all of that. And I'm causing unity to begin to take place within the hearts of different family members in this season. God says, there's going to be some, uh, there's, there's going to have to be some, some, some sit down conversations that are difficult. Yes, come on. But God said, through sitting down through those hard conversations, I will cause hearts to be heard. I will cause unity to take place. And I will cause restoration to take place. But God says, don't be afraid of the hard conversations. Don't be afraid of those difficult moments. But God says, I will show up in the middle of those difficult moments and I will restore and I will heal and I will make brand new. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with your vehicle situation, but I feel like there's something that God wants to do in that area, that God wants to supernaturally bring a breakthrough into your vehicle situation that's going to cause a need to be met in, in a new way. And God says, I've got you. I've heard the prayers. I've heard the things that's been concerned. I've watched even as you, you've counted uh, finances and you've looked over finances and you've weighed options and you've weighed things. God says, I'm bringing forth clarity. I'm bringing forth provision. God says, I am opening up a way that you don't even see right now. I am opening up a fresh pathway forward for you to receive every single thing that I have for you. Also see, even physically, I feel like God, there's a healing that's taking place right now that God says, I'm undoing what it's felt like, uh, uh, um, even some, some things that have been there for a while, God says, I'm undoing it and I'm bringing healing within both of your bodies, says the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Praise God. So you didn't get a chance to comment inside of the uh, Facebook, inside of Facebook. It said, thank you, Jesus. I receive it. Awesome, awesome. Lord, I love you. And she's awesome. got a bunch of crying emotions. Uh -huh. so, awesome. Wow, absolutely. I'm telling you, man of God. Amen. She said she receives it. Amen, amen. Five amen. one again, five one. Amen. It must be everything, even down to the health. Amen. Five one to God be the glory. Yes. Amen. So wow. So amen. wow. Listen, I'm, <laughs> when I say that I am so happy, yes. <laughs> I, I am. <laughs> it comes to a point where you just sometimes you gotta sit back and allow yourself to. Fed in yeah. today. I felt like I was fed. Yes. I feel like I can go into my new week that's coming. Come on. I can go because this morning.
praying, I was in the shower, and I said, God, I thank you for my new week that's coming. Yes. I thank you for I thank you for my new week. I came out of the bathroom. I said, honey, I thank God for my new week. Mm. It hasn't started yet, mm, but great. I praise God for it because yeah. I'm expecting something new to happen. And yeah. then I get here, and I hear a new, fresh word, and yes. I hear a word that is bringing confirmation to the newness that God said mm. I was going to have. Yes. And I can't help but be excited. I can't wait to get Amen. <laughs> Amen. <Awesome. laughs> Amazing. Especially start talking about those new skills, those Ooh. new things. Mm. And, it, don't even, I'm done. I ain't even gonna go. Ain't even, <laughs> I ain't even gonna go. You can't even talk about that off camera. Yeah. yeah. That, that right there. Yes. So new skills. skills. New skills. Mm. We spoke to our daughters so well to the point I had to jump up and run. Mm. He ran. Yeah, I had, I had to just jump up and run. Thank God and, for the room. Thank right, God right, for right, the right, 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 right. Because yes, uh, it, 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 it has been this, this exactly all her like life. This. Yep. Mm -hmm. It has been that all her life. Yeah. And when you talked about the heartbeat and it and the yeah, ooh, and we told her that God was showing us that this was a process and it was yes. going to mature her mm -hmm. and it was going to groom her for greater. And she can't. And God had told me. He said, because I was praying and I said, God, I said, let your will be done. Mm -hmm. Not my will, but your will be done in her life. And God told me, he said, don't you ever, ever ask me to see what you're saying. He said, always pray that she sees and hears my voice, not mm -hmm. your voice. Mm, that's good. Wow. And I was just like, and I, and I, I praise God for that because he, he showed me that I was praying properly. Because sometimes we pray and don't know that we're praying improper yeah. prayers. You know what I mean? Because it's, oh, God, I, I just want you to fix it. God, I just want you to work it out. God, come rescue me. And when you were talking today, when you were speaking about how God doesn't just come and pull you out of the situation, he goes into the situation with you. And that's what God was showing me. He said, you can't ask her to listen to your voice or to see what you're saying. He right. said, you always want her to hear me, see what I'm trying mm -hmm. to show her. My will, not your will, you know? And I praise God that he reminded me I was praying properly because she's going through a process, you know? And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's mm -hmm. tough for her and it's tough for all of us, but we praise God for the process. And when you said that, I was just like, I'm done. Shannon ran for me. I, I, I tried to run, but I was I was trying to run, but I I was like uh, uh, paralyzed for a second because I was like, this dude don't even know what's going on. <laughs> yes. So thank you, Prophet. Thank uh, you. Awesome. Praise God. Yes. I just had to come in the uh, okay. Zoom really quick. I wanted to post oh. um, your cash app because I really want people to be able to yes. bless you. So. Yeah, we want people to sow and be able to give because you you deliver out of the I mean when I said the anointing, you you yes. you you came from your soul. Like you not only came from your soul, like mm -hmm. you came from your personal perspective yeah. of something that you personally experienced. A, a lot of a lot of ministers and preachers, they miss that aspect mm -hmm. of ministry. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we can talk about what's going on, mm -hmm. but then they never turn around and say, listen, this is what happened to me. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah. honestly, a, lo a lot of preachers and pastors and leaders and prophets, stuff like that, really don't want to share their personal life and personal experience because they want them to feel like they're mm -hmm. up here. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have to be able to always come down to where people are, allow them to understand that, yeah, we have a call of God, but we people too, we humans too. Right, 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 right. right. We, we experience that loneliness, that sadness that you was talking about. But when you, but something, when you said God literally cannot leave you, 
because of the yeah. DNA, because of the electricity that's in the ground. He literally cannot ever leave you. When you said that, poof. I was mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. I was done. So for everybody that heard that or didn't hear that, remember, God can't leave you. Yeah. It's not even in him to leave you. So, and, I, and it was so funny because I preached last week that he had that still kind of love. Yes. The, the love that's so still that whenever, wherever you left him, when you come back, that's where he's still going to be. Yes. He's still there. So, yes. prophet, stay out of our business. <laughs> <laughs> stay out of our business. Oh, oh. Awesome. But today was so good. Today was so rich. Yeah. And I'm so glad that uh, you were able to deliver the word of God on today. And um, you have any other final words nope. before I'm we? I'm done. Nope. I'm, nope. You done? Prophet done. He yeah. done took over. <laughs> listen, okay. Can he come back? Oh, can you come back? <laughs> listen, okay. Exactly. Oh, we got brother Daquan. He got his hand raised. Oh, oh wait. Do this need to be off camera, or you got? Are you good to say it right here? You good to say it right here? Okay, go ahead. All right. So, just the fact that, like. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just like I, I, I feel like a, a fire around me, like just, just like just radiating around me. Just every, it's all over. I just feel the fire everywhere, man. Like, mm. and like that was a vision I had that God gave me this morning. Like I was going on my walk, and I just had a vision like I was just surrounded by fire just everywhere. Wow. But not even that. It's just like you were so on point that. I'll, 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 I'll hold back the tears, man. You were even so on point, and I, I can't. I just got God is good, man. God is good. I just gotta give God his praise, man. God, God is good, man. God is good. God is so good. God is so good, man. He walk around the room. He can't even. <laughs> I can't even sit. I can't sit down. Like, like I can't contain the joy that I have in my body right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Amen. Love it. Amen. Well, that was all. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing that. That's good. God bless you, man of God. I just want to speak blessings and, and, and protection over you, brother. Just keep doing what you're doing. God is using you in a mighty way, brother. Just keep seeking his face, brother. And God bless you, man. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, listen, what we're going to do is, I don't know what this is. Oh, okay. Getting all kind of notifications. notifications. Oh, okay. wait a minute. I got one more person that's coming in. That's coming in. Let's give it just one second here. God bless. So, uh, Pastor King, thank you so much for coming in. Look like you did not. Um, yeah, it looked like you didn't join Pastor, in with Pastor the audio. King. Pastor King is a mess. Yes. Maybe we'll save (laughs) Pastor King for for the offline really quick. Yeah, you got to save him for the offline. Yeah, save him for the offline. He'll be on here for another 45 minutes. (laughs) 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 But listen, everybody who is tuned in online, uh, we're going to end the broadcast right now. So we speak blessings to you over your life. We speak blessings of life, health, and strength to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray, Lord, for every person who have, uh, who have gave today, God, and are also going to give to the man of God. When we end the life, make sure you get to give to the man of God. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for doing great things in the midst of us, oh God. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to know that, Father God, that we cannot escape those difficulties, and Jesus Christ actually comes into those difficulties with us and be able to rescue us, oh God. Father God, I thank you, God, for that you are moving yes. currently right now in our life. And we thank you and praise you, Lord, in Jesus Christ. My name, Father God, bless the men of God. Bless uh, Prophet Francis right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, uh, revive him, refresh him, renew him yes. right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. We rebuke every backlash. We rebuke Satan right now. In the name of Jesus, we tell him to go in the name of Jesus.
that tries to, anything that may have tried to stop, harm, or block the man of God right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, we accept you now, Lord of our life. Father God, we thank you and bless you in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Listen, go in peace. And listen, just continue to believe that this is going to be the best day of your life from here and this day forward. Amen.